Hi, this is Martin Simpkins at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Today we're going to do a quick unboxing video uh, highlighting the Hewlett Packard Enterprise micro server. This is a small form factor server targeted at the small to mid-sized business. Let's make this open. Try to do this without um, dropping anything here. Piece. So we've got a few uh, pieces of documentation. It's like an Aruba um, sheet, a sheet on ClearOS for, uh, for HP servers. And we'll talk a little bit more in depth about this in a follow up video where I set this up, but um, I'll read this for you. But this is uh, your new server comes with ClearOS at no additional cost. It's preloaded or available for downloader from hp.com. This is an operating system which has its own application marketplace. <clears throat> it's designed to be simple and simple to, to use and easy to manage through an intuitive web interface. Uh, it has a clear OS marketplace, which includes various applications that you can use to create a gateway server, file server, media server, mail server, and more. Um, so clear OS is uh, based off of CentOS and CentOS is based off of uh, Red Hat Linux. So you can kind of infer from that that being a Linux-based distribution, it's gonna have um, some inherent strengths. And ClearOS is gonna overcome one of the inherent weaknesses of traditional Linux operating systems, which is uh, ease of use for the average person. <laughs> so we're assuming that since I'm a marketing person, I'm an average person. And I think that's probably working. So here's the, sorry, here's the power cord, I'll pull that out become important uh, for our next main video. So carefully. Set this aside. So you can see it's, it's wrapped up in some nice plastic. We'll take care of that momentarily. pretty excited because I get to um, touch some product for a change versus just talking about it and looking at pictures. So you can see it's a, it's a small form factor, um, cubish I would say, I'm not positive it's a complete cube, but it, it appears to be. There's the front, you've got a couple USB, looks like a couple USB ports, some power indicators down here. This is a Gen 10, so this will have the latest um, processors and everything. So this is the back side. You can see it's got looks like a couple fans, a larger fan and a tiny fan. Power, it looks like some room for expansion. Maybe you want to add one or two NIC cards in here for a different kind of solution. A couple display ports, that's kind of interesting. It's supposed to be able to drive uh, dual 4K displays. Um, that's kind of neat. Four more, let's say four more USB ports and two NICs. Um, Two gigabit NICs is, is pretty important if you're going to use this in, in an office environment because if you're setting this up as a gateway to set between your uh, between the internet and your office, you know, you'll have this NIC exposed to the internet and this NIC will be um, how you present the internet to your office environment through, uh, through your, for instance, your unified threat management system set up with this server. So we'll take a look here. Um, looks like you can just pop this off. I don't think you need to be as delicate as, as you might think you would be. So let's, <clears throat> let's get a quick look here. This is looks like a placeholder for a DVD-ROM drive. Uh, maybe people use those still. Depends, maybe a home office doesn't. USB typically would work. It's one terabyte drive here. You have slots here for one, two, three, three more three and a half inch form factor drives, or presumably two and a half you could fit in there too. And what they've done here is, I think, pretty interesting. Here's the one terabyte hard drive this ships with. You just take these screws that are up here and put them in here, 
in the in the holes, the pre-drilled holes um, on the hard drives. These are pretty standard. And then you can just just slide it in, and the screws are really the guides. You don't have to put a separate um, you know separate tray rails on either side of them if you're familiar with that. So that would make uh, upgrading this with looks like three more drives pretty simple um, in the front bay. And we've already looked at the back. But here you've got these. These are Torx. Um, but you, you can, depending on how strong your thumbs are, you can take these off on your own. Set these over here. And looks like this just slides to the back. And then up. Set this over here. So we'll get a look on the inside. See the top um, has the capability for that extra drive. On the side, you can see the you can see the heat sink over the CPU. Um, it's a low power draw CPU, so presumably that's going to help help make this this server nice and quiet for your office environment. You've got two DIMM slots here. Uh, one of these is pre-filled with a standard eight gig DDR4 DIMM, and that's Gonna be that's gonna be fine for what I think I'm gonna use it for, in, in my my home office. Um, with ClearOS installed, I, I don't really know for sure. I haven't used ClearOS yet, but if it's a Linux a Linux distribution, um, typically those have a much much friendlier resource footprint <laughs> um, in my in my experience anyway. So, eight gigs of memory is probably gonna be sufficient for what I'm up to here. <clears throat> So you've got a couple of PCIe slots in here. Uh, not much else to talk about. Power supply built in. Looks like a 200 watt, if I'm reading that correctly. And then a USB key. And looks like another SATA port. So let's go ahead and get this back together. Just wanted to get a quick look at that for you folks. backwards. Let's flip this back the right way. So while we're talking, one of the one of the things that I'm pretty excited about, um, excuse me, is that I'm going to be able to I'm going to be able to use this server and set this up as as a unified threat management solution with clear OS. And when I boot into ClearOS um, in the next video, what I'm going to do is show you the boot menu that comes up and kind of show you how to navigate that and show myself how to nav navigate it. I've not done it myself. And then I've got, a, I've got all of my network, current network settings with my, my two routers and a couple unmanaged switches and some various various computers and everything feeding off of that bandwidth. Uh, but I've got that I've got that at the ready. So now my gateway settings, my DNS settings, etc. And then what I'm going to do is boot into ClearOS and go into their application marketplace. And the, the cool feature with the application marketplace is that there are all kinds of applications in there that can be, that are grouped kind of by, um, by category. So for instance, networking, uh, gateway management, anti-malware. So rather than the approach some operating systems take of, of preloading everything in the kitchen sink on the OS and it gets, it can get a little bloated. Uh, what, what clear OS does is gives you the option to decide what, which of the applications is pertinent to your specific use case and how you're using this and download only those and set those up. And so in my case, I imagine I'll be uh, loading some kind of DHCP server, um, some kind of gateway management, some anti-malware. Um, those are the things that come to mind, maybe not. But anyway, so that's, that's part one. I'm uh, looking at the unboxing of the HPE Microserver Gen 10. 
and stay tuned for my second video where we're going to boot this thing up and walk through the application marketplace and uh, set this up as unified threat management solution. And then once I do that, I'll have a follow-up video maybe in a month or so um, talking about um, how this how this system has performed in the in the in the meantime. Um, you know, did I have to reboot it? What kind of issues I might have had along the way? Hopefully none. And you know, maybe does it <laughs> does it uh, stop any intrusions into my network? That would be that would be pretty interesting to find out as well. I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye.